Hello and welcome to the next turn of this Dominions YouTuber playthrough of Dominions 5 with uh, Late Age Elm. So let's have a look at what's happened. Okay, so I'm not really quite sure where to start, but uh, let's start from the top. A messenger from man. We drink to what we hope will be a long and fruitful alliance. We have more native gems than we can currently use, and we will be looking for earth and fire gems in particular. Perhaps in the future, we could build a mutually beneficial trade network between our armored empires. Satis is located to your northwest and Midgard to your northeast. We don't know who is to your south yet, but we will know next turn. Based on the heat of the provinces, we suspect this is Pythium, the magisters of the forest of Avalon. Okay, and a uh, messenger from Pangaea. A red crow. A red crow blows towards use as quick as an arrow it delivers a message and darts away as if in anger the message reads Sitis has already cast the first defense and offer war well cowardly swamp lizards do not frighten us i do wish to share with all the main province is Sitis 61. so pengi has been you know positioning himself as the intelligence master person who knows where everyone is what everyone is doing and uh he threatened me with you know for gold to not give away my location i paid him nothing i didn't even reply but here, Sitis has attacked him, and he's basically telling everyone where he is. So, yeah. Uh, it's not very good for Sitis, but it does mean all of Sitis' neighbors might decide that it might be a good idea to attack him. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a look at my battle first. There's a lot to cover this turn. So, here are my Black Templars out in the front, my Prophet right in the back. I really don't want him to do any fighting at all. I want all the fighting to be done by these Black Templars. They're going to charge these barbarians. I've got the bless going. And they want to go, 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 go. Yeah, look at that. They're all dead. All the blood glasses go in. We've got the withering weapons agent. Some parts are already routing. Go, yeah. So, uh, this is going pretty well. Um, this is going by as well as one could hope. Speed it up, and then, yeah, they're just charging them down. Yeah, excellent. Okay, let's have a quick look at. Um, if they've taken much damage, black one hit point there. Um, these guys have taken almost no damage, a little bit there. But um, the thing with barbarians is that you either crush them or they crush you. There's very little room for um, like, like a, a, a stalemate. It's just um, they hit so hard, they hit so 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 hard. Um, but the morale is so weak, so you either break the morale or they crush you. That's usually the experience. Okay. So that went very nice and well. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's leave this for later. Let's look at these two magic sites. So yeah, super lucky. I'm not gonna complain. Two magic sites with an Earth One and Astral One search. Um, yeah, very lucky. There's no two ways around that. So maybe uh, with the unluckiness of the heavy calves around me, I'm getting lucky with a site search. So that's great. So one Earth gem and a Earth and a Fire gem, and without. That supply, um, that's my only supply of earth gems, right? So that actually opens up a huge amount of options for forged weapons with my earth doobies because they even get a forge bonus. So this really opens options. And, um, got a nice blood search as well, six blood slaves. Um, unrest, they're high, but um, six blood slaves, so there's eight here. They're gonna go here, they're gonna bring back the blood slaves. Um, and unfortunately, Ah, oh, jeez. It's not going to be enough to cast Sanguine Heritage. And I only got the Unrest down to 8. But I've got more people to patrol. So I'm actually going to Blood Hunt again. Um, and then I'll definitely be able to cast Sanguine Heritage next turn. Definitely going to hurt my gold income. I'm hurting this a lot. It's true. Um... I do have more units to patrol this turn than ever before. Um, I'm going to leave this guy here to stay by and patrol. Um, he's not going out this turn. With all these wolves, wolves, with all these guys. Um, I'm not quite sure where you check to have a look at how good they are patrolling. I'm sure it's somewhere here, but it's da -da -da -da. it's based on one of their attributes. This is seed strength. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you can see the effectiveness of a shoulder units or if there is. I know some units are better at patrolling than others and worse. 
But um, I'm actually not sure if wolves are as good as any unit patrol, but um, I want Sanguine Heritage. I want it. So that guy's patrol lane. This guy's patrol lane. I've got some research and um, research. And also, amazingly, um, just by capturing the province, there's the Mammoth Forest here, which gives me three major gems. This is so good. This actually changes the game like a lot in my favor. Previously without this income, and I've tried, I've tried this build quite a lot, um, just experimenting with it. And the big Achilles heel here is that I have very little nature gem. You have one nature gem income, you only have a 25% chance of a fortune teller having a nature path, and then you search with one level nature around. It, it's, it's To get a nature gem supply income is just very, very hard. But now, with an income of four nature gems per turn, uh, that's vine shields. That's uh, th that's like a vine shield every three turns that I can make. And for the vampire accounts, the vine shield, so good. Like it's just so so good. So I'm really excited about that. Also with Daz, um, he's expressed the interest in earth and fire, which I have here. I have earth gems and fire gems, so I can trade for more nature gems if I need them. So that's like the eye killing shield. Um, and the vine shield which I can get which I must tell you really opens up and options and really increases the utility of those vampire towns which I'm really excited about um, in terms of recruitment I, I just don't have enough gold to do what I want to do um, I want to, I'm just recruiting black templars so I'm going to recruit six black templars this turn with a six here and this guy with his three black templars already there'll be nine black templars which i think will be enough to take this province by itself um, i'm fairly confident about that so i should be able to take this province this next turn and this province so for the first time i'm going to get two provinces in a turn which is so so far behind but um there it is um also i just checked this province 274 income so yeah, that's 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 exciting, but um, no, we've gained it yet. And so the other option is: do I go here first and then here? And this is 178 income, which is also very large. Um, this is farmland, so this province should also have a very high income. But I'm just, I, I just don't know how much income it does have. But um, from here, I have options. I can go here probably, and you see, there's no enemy dominion here, um, so probably no one's too near. Um, too close. It does mean that if I go here, I'm kind of stuck unless I want to go into the province or a wasteland and no one likes wastelands. So this guy might end up going all the way here. We'll have to see. I might have to send this Hawkmaster to go and collect some of the Black Templars because they have more movement speed, but um, that's a problem for later. I might, we'll just have to see what has to, what, what happens. We'll have to see what happens. Um, but the big, the big, <laughs> the big thing that happened this turn uh, I mean, these were big things too, is this battle. I call this battle with Mictlan. And just the way Mictlan is, you kind of expect them to go a blessed strategy, right? That's generally just how they fitted. Um, very cheap units, can take a lot of native scales. They've got bonuses to fire and blood already. So you expect them to go a heavy blessed strategy, but you don't expect something like this. Moral 1, attack skill 2, fire resistance 5, quickness. This is like level 10 water, strength 2, blood surge, and luck. And luck takes 8 astral. Like, this is a crazy powerful bless. Like, this is just so, so, so extreme. Um, so, quickness means these guys get double attacks. They can attack twice um, for half any unit that would normally attack once. Luck means that um, they have 75% chance of negating a fatal wound. So if you're gonna attack the guy and it's gonna kill him, then you have a 75% chance of luck of dealing no damage. Um, on top of that, attack skill and strength too, with blood surge, right? Blood surge buffs these things as well. So I think that's like a bonus of strength plus four to some of these units. Like it's just out of this world. So you got, um, and the angry decks just two, so they got two attacks. So ordinarily you've got per square, you got six attacks with quickness, 12 attacks per square, and they're flying. <laughs> like, and they're flying. It's just, it's insult to injury here. This is, um, so that's what these guys are. Um, I'm terrified. 
I don't like them being near me. Um, they're against these like little hobbity people, and they come in there and they just they just they, they just wreck face. There's no two ways around it. What I have noticed if you go over these units is that because of the way luck works, um, they avoid the killing and blows, but it does mean they take a lot of smaller blows. So you can have a you can easily have one of these units on like two hit points and it just doesn't budge because every blow is going to kill him and they get negated. But he gets down to two hit points, so they do build up afflictions. So if you go through these, I think um, three of them have inflictions. This guy got diseased during this battle. I did check that before. Um, limp and, and this guy's crippled. So out of the six of them, they do have um, three afflictions amongst them, which, you know, it's something. But... Um, Let's have a look at this guy. 19 attack skill. Like from quickness and the bless bonus. And strength as well. Bless plus two. Wait, that's not is he blood surge? Because the blood surge should give him strength as well, I think. Blood surge. Um there's a chance we're off each okay. Uh attack, defense, and strength and reinvigoration. So I'm not quite sure if the attack is 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 stacking. Because there's an attack skill here and then from the blood surge as well, so um should be more than two from the bless. Either which way. Um 19 attack skill I think is enough. So I just want to show you and I'm see if I can get this right. I'm just gonna show you exactly just um ah, oh, what was this? Um a witch misfortune and magic plus two. Well, uh, which promise was this in those in here? So, mm, yeah. Magic, um, like better for researching, but not much to do about that. Um, I'm just gonna quit here, because I wanna show you what Mickland's Pretender is. Because uh, with his Blast, there's basically only one Pretender he can be. I think there are two options. There's, he could be this one, the Great Enchantress, or he could be this guy. He's probably this guy, just because um, slightly better, but let's just have a look at what he's done to get the bless he has. And then, yeah, okay, so he has morale, he has minor fire resistance, he has attack skill, he has quickness, luck. So for luck, he needs um, at least one fortune. And then he has strength of the flesh. And he has uh, blood surge. So this is his bless. He has minus 577 design points. There is only one way to get there. And that is to tank every single scale available and then here's a few points and they're probably going to go to dominion so um this is mcclain's pretender he has to be awake because from the bless he had um these are incarnates only this is his bless this is his pretender um one of the options is the other mage i, I went through this in quite some detail last night it took me a long time to figure out um, just how to make this work because i I think the mistake I had was I thought he was just, I just assumed, you know, max heat scale. But if you've got max heat scale, it doesn't get you there. Because the default for Mictlin is one, so you actually have to go in the opposite direction. Um, income minus 47%. Ah, oh, jeez. Um, resources, like, he doesn't use resources. Um, supplies minus 70%. And uh, he also has death scales. Like, who oh boy. Um, so, yeah. I would like advice on how to deal with this because this bless, I honestly find um very scary. Um, yeah, like those. Let's just go back into the game. Those uh, flying guys are just rough. With all those attacks in the flying, they can get to your back line. But I think, I think I have. I think these guys um, are really well suited to deal with them because the bless I have, right? I have, um, I have blood, so let's just go into the battles so we can actually see 
the bless more clearly. Because uh, I have, um, I'm just actually just remember exactly what I have. It's the blood surge, right? It's a blood surge and withering weapons. And um, yeah, I've got strength plus two as well, which is nice. And morale plus one, which, yeah. but decay weapons, right? That's interesting because um, I think the reason here why my guys, my Black Templars are really going to counter Midland actually quite well is that they've got very high protection and the damage that his units do, especially as flying guys, isn't that high. And they also have a shield, so I've got some parry, um, some parry as well, got quite a lot of defense skill. Um, look, compared to that 19 attack skill, um, they're mostly going to hit, there's just no two ways around that. But I only have to hit them once, right? And then they are going to die because of withering weapons. I just have to hit them once and then not die. With, and the side protection, I think that's viable. I think um, they'll be able to cope because I don't actually have to kill them. I don't have to land a hidden blow. I just have to decay them and then they'll get diseased and then they'll die on the road. And luck isn't going to protect them from decay. So really, I think one of the strategies I might use is to just use Hawkmeisters with bodyguards so he can't snipe my commanders. And then, like like a giant rock golem, there aren't any vulnerable bits. I can just have small groups of Black Templars running around and just smashing him. I think it will work. I'm going to have to test it, but I really do think it will work. And because these guys are so well armored, if I can deny him the Blood Surge as well by just hitting Black Templars... Um, yeah, I think it will really work. And his other units are just mostly trash. Um, another saving grace is that, um, look, one of the other reasons why I'm so concerned about McLean is that I think, um, I'm just checking exactly where he's played by, but he's either like Lucid Tactics or, oh jeez, I should know who's actually in this game. Um, who's the other guy? I forget. But um, uh, he's he's been playing being played by a really competent player, so... I'm scared. It's a really strong bless. Um, but uh, going through what I showed you earlier, he has a maximum dominion of three, which is tiny. I think my dominion is at seven, um, which means that he can only recruit three sacred units per turn in the capital, and I'm producing already six, right? And my guys are bigger and tougher and stronger. So yeah, I think I think that works. Where he does, um, it will become a problem if he does have a lot of cities coming up where he can just spam more Jaguar Warriors. But even with that blessed Jaguar Warriors, I don't think they're going to do very well against the Black Templar. Uh, he also has. Yeah, so he's going to be very vulnerable, I think, to actually being um, Dominion killed. He can. Because he doesn't spread dominion the usual way. I think his god is going to spread at most one dominion. I'm not 100% sure exactly. Because it says dominion does not spread unless blood is sacrificed. Like, that's not entirely true, right? Um, I did check. And his god does disseminate dominion the usual way. But I think maybe only one. The prophet might also. I don't know about thrones. Um, the only thing I can say for sure is that his temples don't spread dominion unless he's performing blood sacrifice. Um, which is how these guys do it but again you can't get more than three and i have the right tools for the job i have inquisitors most of my priests are inquisitors so they're really good at killing enemies dominions i just have to win the battles so the jacket warrior um plant and slash uh so do 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 not ps so that's fine um but that's 20 that's that's still pretty that's still pretty hard against the protection of my black templars and with more strength this is actually i thought they would hit that hard but they do they really really do that's a much bigger number than i was hoping it would be oh well so these guys are going to be a threat but again you can only make about three of them per castle per turn because of his limited dominion he does have summons i'm really not quite sure what those are um these guys i think are the most scary because with this, with that 24 pierce damage, and these are sacred as well, um, these guys will have to hurt the Black Templars bad. So, of all these units, I find these ones by far the most scary. Piercing, 
yeah. But um, I think my Black Templars will crush these guys. I'm actually, I will do a test, but I think my Black Templars will crush these guys. So one of the things that I'm considering on where to go from here is how to deal with this. Because I think I could rush him, and I think I have the right tools to rush him with the Black Templars. Like next turn, I'm going to have um, like 18 Black Templars. I don't think he'll be able to stop that. Not with the tools he has. And he also probably has his pretender running around doing site searching. Unless he's doing um, research, which, look, I I'm not quite sure what he's doing. But his pretender is probably site searching with those magic paths he has. I I that's what I hope he's doing with it. And if I could catch his pretender and kill him in the open, um, his blessed strategy collapses. Like it's all about those incarnate blesses. Um, so that, that's a killing blow, kill his pretender while he's side searching. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that maybe I go here, 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 and I spread down here, I expand to these neutral provinces and then just go for him and try and kill um, his castles while they're being built and then dumb kill him. It might work, I'm not sure. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm not gonna do any more blood hunting here because of the unrest. Um, you're gonna move here to search so to blood hunt here, right? For six thousand. Um, it's only one astral. I'm not gonna worth side searching. This guy's gonna go here and side search there. Hopefully, be lucky. Um, or more so as before. These guys gonna be researching. You're gonna blood hunt. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, jeez. Not using all my recruitment points here. Commander points is not great. But um, I can't even afford the wolf herd. Um, but um, I, I want the Black Templars. That's the priority. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to have 19 here. 19 Black Templars. I'm really thinking about just rushing him. I really am. I think it'll work. But uh, I really want to actually focus on just expanding my own economy because Lord knows I'm behind. And I'm going to build to get, um, yeah, with the Blood Hunter here, I'm definitely going to cast Sanguine Heritage and get my first Vampire account. Um, and they'll be like at turn 8, which is definitely behind, but there it is. Another thing that I realized is that Pretenders of the World, uh, Moose, here I am, I am, Gatherer of the Dead, the Watcher of the Gallows, the Man Eater, the Leech. There is no doubt that I'm a Blood Hunting monster. Like, that's just what that is. So, if everyone checks, they'll know. They know what I am. Um, another thing to mention is that the obvious tool that I have against a blessed rush is these guys, the Ghoul Guardian with a black halberd, who have a special attack against Bane of Heresy against um, all sacreds, right? So fatigue damage, um, magic damage. So, oh jeez. And it's area of effect one. So it does luck negate this. I think it does. So I, I don't quite know exactly how useful these guys are, although it is area of effect one. So it affects all the different units in that area. I have to check exactly how these guys are against that base strategy as well, but um, it's a luck thing I'm worried about. I just want to have to hit them and kill them, but luck doesn't allow you to do that. Um, so I'm going to write some messages. I haven't written them yet. I should have done before and send them off. I'm definitely going to, I'm not quite sure exactly what to do. Do I want to tell people about McLeod's situation? I think most people on, um, will be on board with me, especially Daz has really um, feel like McLean is a great threat. So about his Pythium, I'll message him, telling him that McLean is to the south and he's a major, major, major threat and I have a unique position to stop him. So I would like peace. I'm probably going to tell him that because if he, but if, if Sabaos attacks me, I think he just kills himself because um, McLean will just ruffle stomp him. That's my expectation. Um, the bless is so, so, so extreme, I can't believe it, but there it is. Um, McLean is here. I kind of want to get a feeling for how expanded he is, so I'm going to go there and just see what's up. You've got some crossbow. Uh, 
I wonder if I might try and attack a current province if, if I just find um, a commander. We'll just have to see. But um, yeah, um, I'm glad to have a big army next turn at least. Uh, I'm not so sure about this blood hunt. This unrest is going to get high, but I really want to be able to cast that one heritage next turn. I really want to get that blood economy going. Maybe blood is more valuable than gold, but mm, we'll see. Um, this province is adding a lot of resources. And um, I really like this province, but I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to get this so soon. But I'm a bit, um, I, Ideally, I would like to be able to build a scout, but none of the provinces allow it. It's just barbarians and just the default things. So, uh, mercenaries, um, man has got the both, that's fine. So that's the turn, as I say, I'm gonna write some messages, I'm gonna send them off, and that'll be the turn. Thank you for watching and wish me luck. Okay, bye. Hello, and uh, back with some messages. So I decided only to send messages to man. I'm just hoping Pythium will be up to better things and not bother me, we'll have to see how that plays out. Okay, so I'm saying, oh no, I don't wanna retract, I wanna read it. We have observed, greetings old friend, we have observed the military might of our neighbor to the south, Miklan, and we are terrified. Dear sacred units have been blessed with quickness, luck, blood surge, and strength. Uh, I, I left out, you know, fire resistance and attack because, jeez. If this nation is allowed to grow, we fear they will become unstoppable. In order to accommodate bad spelling, this bless their lands are a frozen, barren, and miserable place, and the dominion of the god is pitiful. They are, however, marginally lucky. We might be in a position to hold them, but um, will recover, require, at the very least, safe relations with all our other neighbors and, at best, some assistance. And these rich lands, my god, my spelling and grammar has just been appalling. I hope he figures that out. Uh, we are embarrassed to admit that we are indeed short on gold. Uh, fortunately, we do have a supply of both earth and fire gems, and our need for nature gems is great, so we anticipate a very fruitful trading relations. Your friends and arm. We also decide to send to man. We do not wish to announce our intentions to the world at large, but if you do happen to learn of any nation planning aggression to our lands, please inform them of the dire threat Mickland poses to us all and advise wisdom. So, look, if Pythium or anyone else decides to come and try and be aggressive towards me, I'm going to tell them about Mickland, but I'm not going to tell them I'm attacking Mickland in case they decide to attack me while they think I'm weak. I think I have to. Like I, I just, I think I just do. Besides, I'm going to be spanning in that direction as well. It will be exciting times ahead. That's for sure. Okay. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay. I think I've finally, after the fourth chance, really got the kind of battle I'm looking for. So the idea here is that it's ten eagle warriors against five or six black templars, all with bless. So it's a blessing to come down. I want these guys to be on the move because they need to also use their lands. So you start running along. There we go. These guys are going to come down. These guys are to attack the flies. Everyone's got their blessings going. Come on. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is. What we're hoping to see, got the decayed on already. You see, like this is this is exactly what we want. Decay on four of them, right? That's fantastic. Zoom around, still holding. It is. Um, you're decaying, put one decay there. What the hell, you're 44. <laughs> Jeez, if they didn't have the double the um, age, it'd be really bad. I really would have hoped the back templars would have worked better. So that's five foot six. I guess that's the story. They outnumber me by that much, it's gonna go badly. 
Yep, that's it.